These are my top five favorite allocations right now, and I'm going to show you how I take care of them. Hey, Pablo from Learning here, and as you know, I'm currently growing a bunch of allocations. I made a video about me trying to grow all the jewel allocations, but I've also been buying some other kinds. So I figured it would be fun to do an update of which species, which allocations are just just have been the most fun for me to raise, um, the less difficult in some ways, and then also the most interesting. So I'm really excited to talk about them and let's get started. The first one is going to be Alocasia microlitsiana um, or Alocasia phrytic. This is a species endemic from the Philippines, from the island of Luzon, and it was discovered in the early 1900s. And usually the green variegation is the one that is the most popular. It gets pretty big and it has been used like as an ornamental allocation for a while. But the variegated kind, which is this, what this is, so pretty that is, um, this ones I think have only become super popular lately. I think what happened is they hit the tissue culture market and then they were able to be sold a lot cheaper. So um, over the past, I wanna say six months, I've been sort of like wanting this plant and also keeping an eye out on the price. I said that if I paid like $75, that would be way too much, which is what I see most sort of like um, TC bags and stuff. But then I went to this plant swap and they were having some incredible prices at um, Great Better Choice uh, Nursery. And um, this ended up being $26, which is absolutely insane. I mean, look how pretty that is. It has one, and now it has a new leaf coming out in the middle, which also seems to have some pretty variegation. Um, they actually had a bunch of options, and I got like a lot of, I don't know. I realized how much diversity there is within the variegated Friday. I mean, there were some patterns that were just more chunky, so other ones was almost like a camo, which was pretty cool. That's kind of like what I chose for mine because it had some interesting camo patterns. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited that this plant is now part of my collection. That's why it's my favorite plant right now because I'm just really excited to see it. It did really well acclimating into Leca. I got it. I put it into Leca right away. Um, and yeah, it only lost one of the little baby leaves. And right now it's pushing a brand new one. So I'm super excited. I cannot wait for it to get like massive and just show you guys some awesome pictures. The next one is going to be Alocasia princeps or purple cloak. This honestly really surprised me. I got it last fall just because it sounded interesting and I saw like a picture that I was like, oh no, it was a video. I saw this one video that was really cool and I was like, that's an interesting plant. So I got it and it went through a little bit of shock when I put it into Leca um, last fall. So it took a little bit to take off. But I'm going to be honest, the past few leaves have just been incredible. It gets this really thick veining on the leaf that almost like comes out so you see the texture. And then you get this really deep purple in the, behind the leaf, which then translates to this darker part in the front. So it has this almost yellow stripes going through it, which is really, really interesting. And then the stem is just beautiful, going from like a deep purple into just like the green and then just having those really dark veins um yeah no this plant i'm really really excited to see it grow i know it gets pretty big like four feet or whatever um i'm really excited about this plant i think it's going to be beautiful i was not expecting to love the, the shape of the leaf so much um but yeah this has been a really pleasant surprise alocasia purple cloak alocasia princeps um this plant is endemic from malaysia and it has been in cultivation also for a while but um, yeah, I don't see a lot about this. I don't see it too often and I don't see a lot of pictures of people just having like a big one. So I'm really excited to share. If you have one of these, please share with me um, if you have any tips. So far, once it acclimated, it has been doing pretty good inside its, its um, container with some semi-hydro and it also gets this really cool, almost like bluish sheen whenever you put it against like certain lights. You can see how it gets like purpley, but then it like it's bluish. Um, yeah, it's such a, such a fun plant. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Number three is going to be this, which I'm honestly really surprised to be changing my mind on it. If you saw my, um, Jewel Alocasia video, I basically talked about how I thought this plant was like scam basically. And then if you saw my complete plant tour, you know, that this plant got spider mites. The only one that has gotten spider mites since we moved into the apartment. So I'm already in a love hate relationship with it. But what I realized is that I was just not doing it right. 
This is Alocasia purpley, which is a hybrid made here in Miami in the 1950s um, from a cultivar, I think, of Amazonica. It was basically just created here and it has been passed around locally, but eventually just made it into like a broader market. So that was my issue. When I first got it, I put it outside and you would get a little bit of purple, but then it would just turn completely green, just like this one. You see how green it is? And then when we first moved here, it started to put out a new leaf. And then I said, you know what, whatever. I'm just gonna put it in front of the light, like literally within like an inch. I'm just gonna like almost burn this plant with so much light. And I am impressed with how purple this plant got. I, I, I honestly like had to take videos and just the whole thing because I was so impressed by this purple color. And it remained purple for like months. Um, now it has basically faded into this kind of white, off-white, kind of purple. It almost looks like a marbling. Um, you can see the video. It's just really shiny, so it shines with that. But here, so you can see how it has basically become this white, marbled, um, I don't know. It's, it's really interesting. So now that it's putting out a new leaf, finally, it has been slower. You see it's putting it out. I'm going to try again, and I'll make a short about it, basically just blasting it with a bunch of light and just making videos. And I think that is how I crack the code of purpley. Whenever a new leaf comes out, you have to put it in front of the light. Once it's done being purple, you move it back to wherever it was from. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about this plant and I'm just glad to have changed my mind about it. And I'm actually happy to own it. This is Alocasia cupria, which is endemic to Borneo and Southeast like Indonesia. And this has been a really surprising plant to own. When I got it, I thought it was going to be really difficult. I thought it was, it just looked like really alien and complicated. But I will say it has been one of the easier ones to take care of. The leaves are a little bit complicated because they come out sort of like folded and you need to like keep popping them back up to, for them to like keep this cool shape. Um, but it's a plant that has sized up fairly quickly is a plant that has kept many leaves, which is really, really important for alocasias because or else they look really weird. But I will say this has to be the most, the most, the most light sensitive alocasia that I own. The leaves basically just want to bail. Um, I'm constantly just moving it around. Um, the first place that I had it, the light was too close. So all the leaves kind of just went to the side. I moved it somewhere else and the light was still a little too bright. So the leaves started to move out. Um, and now I have it almost like in the middle of the room with no direct light, you know, just some above it. And I think that is what's doing better with this leaf. You see it like it's sort of um, not facing completely that way. So yeah, I'm working on it. But if I had to say something specific about this plant is that you might want to give it less light. Um, I think with this, less is more if you want to get it like bushy or just like sizing up. If you like the, the way it looks kind of um, just sort of facing forward or kind of like a little bit down, um, then um, light works. So yeah, if you guys have any advice on Alocasia cupria, I would be more than happy to like listen because I just want to get like the big leaves, but I also want to make sure that they're not all like facing down. Um, cause that kind of defeats the purpose, even though it has like the most beautiful backside. I mean, look at that. You cannot be too mad about looking at this beautiful copper, which is why you get the number cupria, um, color. I mean, it's just amazing. Look at that. So pretty. This is a plant that is super cheap right now. So if you don't own it, I would definitely give it a shot for like $9. It's definitely worth it. Um, it's a fun allocation to own. My favorite alocasia at the moment has to be alocasia heterophylla. I know it's a little bit of like cheating because there's like two types, but honestly, both have been a great experience with a um, slightly different taste. So I feel like regardless of which one you like like better or you think it's more appealing, I think both of them have been a lot of fun. This one right here is alocasia heterophylla corazon. As you can see, it has this much more pronounced sort of like opening between the lobes. So it creates a more heart shape, but you still get that silver color. Um, it has this incredible veination and it has just sized up really, really well. And it put out a bunch of corms that gave like huge leaves. So this plant is really prolific and it has just sized up beautifully. It comes out with the leaf looking a little bit smaller, but then it just grows, grows, grows as it matures. So 
it makes it fun because you don't know how big the leaf is actually going to turn out until it fully like matures and that's that's fun and this one here is alocasia heterophylla dragon's breath also native from the philippines and this one has no opening like the lobes is like really small it looks more like a tongue and then it gets this really long and slick coloration to it um i think it's just absolutely beautiful but you can see the difference very clearly between the two uh, you see the shape you see like this one is has a rug almost like an, an edge that moves this one is a lot smoother um yeah so alocasia heterophylla has just been a lot of fun if you don't own one of these it's another one that i recommend you can probably find it for like less than ten dollars one of these online and yeah they're gonna size up really nice they are just going to be interesting to look at and that's a lot of fun so let me know, do you own any of these alocasias yourself? Do you have any favorites at the moment? Um, do you have any tips for some of the ones that are looking a little, a little funny? Um, I really want to know. Comment down below. And this video is probably the one you should be watching 